All right, this is the March 2nd meeting of the uh, Conway Select Board. It's 6 p.m. We're also going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee this evening at 6.45 to discuss the fiscal year 2021 budget. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by our residents and the public. All right, first item on the agenda, the minutes for February 24th. Has everybody read the minutes? Look good to me. Any, any uh, changes or amendments? We're all set? All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the February 24th second. meeting. Do I have a second? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. We have, um, we have three warrants tonight. We have a vendor warrant for $33,192 a payroll warrant for $122,075 and a payroll deduction warrant for $31,440. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda. Meetings attend by select board members, Philip. Really, the, uh, the, the reading, reading at this reading at the grammar school today. That doesn't count as a meeting, but it was fun. Good. Read across America Day. Read a book. Right. Read across America Day. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, so, so we had a we had a short select board meeting on Friday. And, uh, very short. Uh, on Saturday, I did, um, to some extent, I won't say represent the town, but I was invited to come into a Sierra Club uh, climate meeting where they get municipal leaders together from around the state to talk about things towns can do. And, uh, and it's sort of a combination of towns that aren't doing anything and towns that have, <coughs> you know, have done some stuff. and and we at least have some things we can talk about that we've done, so it was, it was good. So. Right, okay. All right, and I had, uh, aside from the short select board meeting we had last week, uh, I had, didn't have any meetings. Do we have any public comments? No public comments, okay. And we have no old business, new business, economic development. What do we have for economic development, Tom? Well, we've gotten a couple of uh, invitations to give out some ideas for what the town of Conway might want to have in terms of economic development. And the, uh, the main thing that's been under discussion since I've been here anyway is um, the possibility of some development downtown, which is dependent on increased wastewater capacity. And uh, we have our wastewater committee who was working on a proposal for that, found out what kind of a system we could have, how it would work, how much it would cost. Uh, we did not get any mass works grant from that because they demand that we be further along in our economic development before uh, asking for any infrastructure money that would allow us to have more uh, businesses downtown, perhaps uh, greater density, uh, uh, more of a village center. Uh, than we have now, uh, and there are these, there are these uh, two different proposals, uh, not proposals, but invitations. One from Representative Blay uh, is one where she's looking for ideas from across her district to present as earmarks in the current legislature, uh, legislative session. Uh, the second is the Franklin Regional Council of Governments runs the local uh, economic development strategy, uh, which relates to uh, the, the federal government. And they're also looking for projects um, to put on their list. And given the criteria for the projects that they fund, it's unlikely that this would be funded through them. But if we could get on their list, it would make it a more competitive proposal for other grants or 
uh, funding sources, knowing that it was a, a regional priority. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's also a kind of a long shot because it does have to be a regional priority. But they're willing to list things, um, you know, because they they want to boost local um, local projects. So it's it's a, it's possible we could get on their list. Um, it was all, it's uh, almost certain we would not get funded uh, through that, but uh, those are those are two things. And and since the only real one, uh, real project that we have that's uh, so to speak shovel ready, um, which it isn't quite, but it's you know we have a good study is the wastewater project. I thought Joe could come in and uh, refresh people's memory about. Uh, what that is, what it would cost, what it would take to do it, and uh, with any luck, um, you would uh, instruct me to reply to Representative Blake and the said's invitation to uh, to put that project in place in both of those venues. Joe, do you want to give us a little review of that? Uh, I'd love to give a little review of that. As the head sewer rat. Is it over yet? <laughs> um, I'll try to give you the short version, I guess. In uh, 2013, I believe, we tried to pass the bylaw for. That you want to go? 2013? 2013, for a village center district. And I think maybe it was Bob's wife and one of the people that said, we can't have development unless we have a downtown sewer. Or it was somebody who might be related to Bob. But anyway, there was a bunch of people there that said, we got to fix the sewer problem first. And we went off and did a preliminary study. The town gave us some money, and we did that with a firm out of Pittsfield. And they kind of steered us uh, away from a full-blown sewage treatment plant to basically putting in a community leach field, mm -hmm. um, and then replacing the tanks at each individual that hook up with a tank that also has a pump in it. So it would be a low pressure pump to push the sewer down to the leach field. And so it would be a community leach field, a, a maximum of 10,000 gallons per day, which would initially handle something like 30 homes. And after two years of data, it was shown that we weren't using the 10,000 gallon capacity. We could add a wow. home and both the original White Engineering and Kai and Vaughn, who did their second uh, feasibility study, said it seemed like we might get to 40 or 50 homes, which would do quite a good job of covering the downtown area. Um, the lower part would definitely need a pump to, to push it over to the Sheldon Falls lot that we own. The, the second iteration from Kai and Vaughn came in closer to a million and a half. Um, and I don't think there's any way that we can easily convince the whole town to pay for this. That seems to be one of the stumbling blocks, is putting it on the tax rate. So what I would suggest is that we be looking for like a million and a half of grant money of some kind, and then maybe a hundred or maybe 150,000 as sort of seed money to get it started. Because when we first build it, I don't think everybody's going to want to connect the day we build it. So we're going to have some operating costs for a year or two. Um, that hopefully the town would fund and then it would sort of become self-sufficient as people looked up and paid their annual fees. Um, and they would then have a, a, a legitimate <coughs> sewage disposal system, if you will. You know, it, it, they would still have a pump, they would still get their pumps pumped every, you know, at some frequency. Is there any way to create a, a village center sewer district and make it mandatory for anyone in that district to hook up to the um, You can do that. Um, the board of that, and that falls into the Board of Health domain. The other thing about staying under 10,000 gallons, it stays with the local Board of Health. And we don't need, it's not a state, a DEP thing, and we just deal with our local Board of Health. The Board of Health would have to declare systems in failure or they would have to say that if your system fails you have to connect. So there, that would be that period when okay your system hasn't failed but when it fails you can't replace it you have to hook to the town system. So th there's going to be a two or three years where uh, we're going to be paying for the operation but we won't have enough users maybe to, to pay the full operating cost. So there's no way to, to set that district up and then Say to everybody, yes, you have to get on it at, at one point in time. 
it didn't seem like that was going to be feasible. Some people have just maybe spent $40,000 on a, a pump-up system where they're pumping it up in their backyard, and they're not going to be excited about hooking up, and you know, they're going to say, well, who's going to help me pay off my, I've got a $40,000 mortgage on my septic system, and now you want me to pay. So I think it's going to be, a, it'll be a tough sell if we made them hook up right away. But it won't eliminate their tight tank and pumping that out? <clears throat> no, as a matter of fact, this system would have a tight tank, and you would, but you would pump it to the leach mill, basically. So if you wanted to, you could pump it down. But I think you said that they would still have to <coughs> pump out their tank there would be a, There would be a conventional septic tank on your site, but it would also have a pump in it. He, so, he's only taking a raise of waste of water, just the, just the not water. the sediment. Not the sediment. Everybody's telling us that when you do this kind of a thing, you usually don't have to pump your tank but like every seven to ten years. But the, it, it sort of self-consumes, you know. The, it, the, the septic action gets better with time, and they're saying you, in most cases you don't pump every seven to ten years. So you would still have a tank, but it has this additional chamber and a pump and a filter system. So you're just pumping the wastewater. So you're dealing with the water disposal. And how often do you pump it out now? <clears throat> Four to five, depending on use, six, six times a year. Six times a year. So that's a huge difference. What, what are you paying for pump? You uh, it keeps going up. It's close to 600. 600. Okay. Six times a year. <clears throat> for 600 bucks, yeah. Wow. Not for 600 bucks, like $600 each time. Each yeah, time. Yeah, six yeah. times six, $3,600 yeah. to pump. Oh. We, I think. On Based on the numbers I've run, these people would end up paying pretty much the typical rate for a sewer disposal system, which is somewhere between six and nine hundred dollars a year. The people that would hook up would be putting that kind of a payment in to pay off the operating cost. Assuming we get capital to do it, we would just need to the operating cost. There would be an inspector that would come out and check your tank and tell you when it needed to be pumped. And it has an effluent filter, so nothing can leave the tank. So it, it seems viable to me. It seems like the best solution. I keep following this industry, and they keep getting more and more sophisticated equipment. They now have a an IC or fiberglass or a plastic septic tank that has a pump chamber in it. So they would rip out your old tank and put this new tank in and hook up the line to the disposal site would be like a two inch plastic pipe. It's not a it's not an eight inch sewer main, it's not a gravity pipe, it's just a little low pressure pipe. So there's a pump in your tank and it pushes it down <coughs> the spring, or it flows gravity if you're on upper main street. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems like we should keep it on the list. We should try to put it on as many lists as we can. I did go to uh, Blazes and Comerford's um, sewer event they had over in Waitley. They, they got a lot of interest. A lot of people have the same problem we do. You know, there was originally the Clean Water Act in the late, was that, early 70s. And the town decided to go the septic tank route. So the selectmen said everybody goes to septic, and then they appointed the Board of Health and said, it's your problem. So you, you guys apparently were the Board of Health in, in the 60s. Is that, do you remember that? A lot. The board, the selectmen were the Board of Health. Yes, they were. Yeah. So they, they said we're going to go sewers, and they created the Board of Health to deal with it. And, and whether it was the right decision or wrong decision, I don't know. But it, I think it's time to consider moving on to the next phase. You know, which is and are there are other towns around doing exactly they're looking to do the same thing. A lot of other towns have done this already. Yeah. Like that. Well, oh, other towns have done this system. Yep. It's, it's actually quite popular, like in big developments. We went over to South Hadley. There's a development as you're coming down off the notch. There's 150 condos, and they have one of these systems in there. And we actually went and visited, and it was operating. You know, and treating them. In that case, I think they actually had a septic tank, a 10,000-gallon septic tank, and then they had a 10,000-gallon you know, treatment tank for the, for the water. But obviously, in that situation, they won't have to be on the system. Yeah. Yeah. It was put in when they put the development in. Yeah. The town required it. And that would be essentially what we'd be doing here. So did you get a feel from data of how fast people would switch over? I don't have good data on how fast people. You know, I would think once we got the momentum going, more people would 
get excited about it? You know? so I know there's a, there's a bunch of people that are si similarly situated to me that have an original septic. Mine was built in 71. Um, but, you know, I, and m when mine got cleaned out, the guy said, yeah, the soil around this is perfect. You're going to be the last septic standing of any of these houses <laughs> around here. And that's um, one of the problems. But, we, we did a whole survey of the town, and some people are on their fourth or fifth tank. Yeah. Some are still on their original. Yeah, but, but I do know a, a lot of my neighbors have... We, you know, this has come up in conversation, and there, there definitely is interest in this, and it, it's, it's especially what, you know, no, not only for when you're at the choice point of new septic or 900 bucks, um, then then this looks really good, but uh, but but, but you don't you don't pump yours out six times a year, right? It's three it's 300 bucks once every three years. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it, you know the. The, the, the thing that people don't talk about is how it depresses the, the real estate values in the whole area. That Look at the, the house in 11 River Street that sold for $16,000 because the septic failed and, and nobody buys things that you don't, that, you know, right. with a question mark. Yeah, uncertainty, right? Right. Yeah, and, a good system. Um, and there, there's so many examples like that that, um, yeah. you know, that, that they have. And then the other thing is that the, the discussion points when this came up at town meeting and how, you know, the... I, I thought some, some of the viewpoints were very anti-community um, and not really in the spirit of, say, you know, uh, the, the numerous residents that, for whom this would benefit more directly, no doubt, but still, you know, they're, they're the ones that, that uh, have, you know, signed up for our highway garage, highway facilities when they don't, they don't directly benefit from our highway department except driving through town to visit their friends, but um, because they live on the state highway. That's why I said, I think, without a grant, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get the citizens out of the structure to pay for this thing. It's not going to happen. So the first thing you say, well, who's going to replace my septic system? You know, when it fails. They don't, I, they don't realize that the people in downtown bought into a, a system. They don't have the land. They, you know, they're, they're constrained. Where the people out there, they got a four-acre lot. They can easily put in another lease field. Maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars if they need to. They, they don't need like um, Mark Silver. He's got one of those uh, Renko systems, you know, that's close, close to forty thousand know, dollars um, in his yard. And there are other people that are pumping up into their backyard and the pump system. And that I think that's the future. Eventually, you may be like you said, you may be the lucky one. You may be the only one left. <laughs> All right, so that's certainly one of the one of the items that we want uh, to put on on Natalie's list. Um, yeah, I haven't yeah. heard where the sewer thing ended up. I went to the meeting. We got the minutes, or the notes from the meeting. But I haven't heard. Maybe that's the same list. Maybe that's. I think we should go on her list, and we we should probably put it in the set. It's in our master plan that we need it, which is another place and that needs to. Why did we put this on the MVP plan? Grant the. Refresh my memory. I don't think it qualified for that. No, it did. I think it did. I thought there was an issue with qualification, to be honest. Um, it, may, it may be in there. I don't, I can't recall. Because it is next to the river, and pretty much everything that's next to the river is things we're interested in getting in the plan. I think it is in the plan. Is it? I, but I can't say for sure. Without it. Yeah. I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be either. Well, I would the, the, encourage you to put it wherever you can. Yeah. When, when, you get, when you get that 20 page single month, single space thing at the, at the end of every budget year that's the governor's supplemental and you see the goodies that go out in different towns. And my, you know, this, this year we're half a million dollars to the town of Milford for an indoor street hockey rink that the state just writes a check for. Boom. And then something like this. No. We can get some energetic woman here. Maybe they can get us on Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that certainly should be in the list. Okay. Tom, do you need any help from me, or you all set? No, no. Um, I'm all set if, if people are, if the select board is okay with uh, my shooting up responses saying, yes, please put us on your list. Absolutely. Sure. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Do you want a proposal, or is this, is this good? No, no, we're good. That's we're good. good. Okay. Do, do we have any highway items, Ron, that we need to put on this list? of uh, identifiable uh, capital infrastructure needs, aside from just about everything to do with culverts <laughs> and bridges? Well, it is 
for economic development, I just okay. have to say. So okay. I honestly we haven't had time to <coughs> constantly you know, Okay. Um, great. Thank you. The next item is update um, money for the playground. Yeah, you have an email from Jan, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she was just reminding you that um, one of the uh, one of the trust funds that uh, the grammar schools is uh, thinking that we might use uh, also is our main scholarship fund. I, I just, I, and I, uh, I copied off just, uh, just before I came over here the, uh, <coughs> the wording, the wording for that. And uh, the other one, it's also very simple. Uh, that, that's the M and M voice, Mark and Mildred voice. This is the uh, Marine Honorine Tremaine fund. Uh, so, and, and you can see the, the, the language is quite simple. Um, and as you know, town council agreed last time that so long as money from these the, from from our trust funds was uh, that were for um, rehabilitation of needy, handicapped children. Uh, that you know, because the Conway swimming pool would be open to everyone in Conway, that the ADA requirements, the the handicap requirements, could be paid for using the trust fund. Mm -hmm. So the town agreed to do that, and uh, I mean, the select board agreed to do that. And uh, the, so, so the only consideration here really is that. There are uh, there are limits to how much the select board might want to give. We still don't have a figure from the school as to how much the ADA requirements would be, uh, but that's uh, my my sense is that uh, based on previous discussions that that might be larger than than the select board uh, would feel comfortable making from these from these two funds and and. Also, as you know, we, we have not been able to give out as much in scholarship funding right. uh, from the uh, MNM voice fund recently because we did, we have made a lot of expenditures from it. So. Right, well, we can, we can make, um, we can take funds from CTA for this. We don't, why do we have to go to the trust for this? We don't. They're just, the school's just looking for, you know, all the different, um, Okay. But we could we could do everything out of CPA for them. Well, not um, we could <laughs> um, yeah, if, yeah. if if the CPA uh, agreed to that. Yeah. Will, will, will the CPA do that today? Are they, they going to decide? That? They're showing up with numbers and with the whole crew. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, uh, I and I think that they are slightly confused and that they're con whatever they're, they're they're bringing the the. the these funds issues, they're bringing this all right before Malcolm at 6.30, and I'm kind of nervous for everybody. <laughs> 6.30. I thought it was 6, but it is 6.30. Yeah. Because you can use CPA funds for the improvement of recreational facilities or rehabilitation of recreational facilities as well. Right. I, I think, I, you know, based on our vote from last week, what I had asked them to do is to, uh, tuss, you know, tussle out from the proposal what's for... You know what's for the, the you know for handicapped or disabled access, and what's not. What's what's for general access, and to sort of to t because that's that's the, and they're, they're that's why yeah that's why they're coming with such a large crew because there's people that okay but have, we could take all of that money out of CPA whether it's for disabled but they or may not, not you know they may not put it in they, they'll decide that. <coughs> And there was, there was a, an email to the, from 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 Tom that went to them last week, that sort of encouraged them to go this route, this trust fund route. And I'm, I'm characterizing what the email said, but mm -hmm. um, it, I think that's a fair characterization that it sort of encouraged them to go this route. 
So uh, they they broached the subject yes, with they did. us, and I said yes, um, that is something that is possible. Yes. And then we I brought it to the select board last week, and um, now we're just continuing to get further information, and uh, I also requested them to come up with a number for what the ADA improvements would be, uh, which, I, as I mentioned, I have not yet gotten. So I didn't, yes, I didn't well, mention it was Dr. Susan's birthday time today. Mm -hmm. so, so, uh, by the, so by the way, the, so we should put this off a week then until we get both of those numbers. But if that's that's the drop. One week is the drop dead date, and yeah. that's like right. That's that's it. It's, well, um, well, were you going to get those numbers today? No. We're about to close. It, 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 there's no deadline on this. Okay, it's, it's trust fund. Okay. The the CP, but the CPA C money on uh, the has, warrant has to get on the warrant. Now yeah. I have a placeholder for that. I'm assuming. I mean, we have to have that article anyway. Right. So that's. That's on the warrant. The details can be worked out. I think. Okay. All right. So you're going to that meeting at six thirty. Is that right? Um, I think I. I guess so. Um, okay. Well, that, isn't that why we have the the uh, yeah. finance committee at six forty five? Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. You did that. Yeah. yeah. You well, said you were going to do that. You yeah. did it. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that you could take that 15 minutes to go over there and find out what the numbers were, right? Well, if they have the numbers at this point. Yeah, if they're making their pitch to the, to the CBC tonight. Yeah, I'll go do that. Okay. Yeah, because it's 6.30. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to do that just yourself, and we can continue having the meeting? And yes, you're welcome, to, you're welcome to all come. Oh, no, I, 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 I was hoping we could all come, but... We, we will we will continue our meeting. Great. Phil will be back very shortly to right. let us know what's going on. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, next item on the agenda, town meeting a non-money uh, non articles, discussion, vote, conclusion on the warrant. Yes. Town meeting. Uh, right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have seven um, non-money articles that have been proposed. Um, you all know about the, there's two having to do with marijuana, that you know about the citizens petition, and you know about uh, that there may be a planning board article. So they've told me to, you know, have a placeholder for that. So I, you know, I think those are, um, we're just waiting for other people's actions on, on that hand. I mean, I'm going from the bottom right yeah, now because yeah. we can, we can uh, get rid of those, some of these. Uh, the assessors um, have a plan uh, that they believe will make it easier for people. And uh, Lee can be in to talk about that, um, I think, as we get going. But they, uh, it, it, it is quite complicated. and. Um, I will. Uh, I will see if she can come in next time. She's uh, she's very busy right around there. What are we talking about? Now? Uh, this is for the assessor's article. I'm just going up from right. What what does it have to do with personal uh, exemptions? Yeah, and uh, it's it's complex. But uh, the 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 upshot is we offer. An exemption, it, um, and I think it's a senior exemption, but there is a uh, there's a provision in the one that the town adopted that uh, sort of vastly restricts or substantially restricts uh, who might benefit from it, and she thinks that that the town could afford um, having the 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 alternative option that the law gives uh, that would be a more in keeping with the spirit of what Conway was trying to do in the first place. So it's going to be basically a clarification. So, so you're looking for the board to approve putting this on the warrant? Well, not, uh, uh, yeah. not, not, or I mean, this is not by citizen petition. No, no the, the, ne next week is the is is the sort of closing of the warrant. Yeah. And I'm just saying, um, tonight what we should do is vote on these to to see whether or not they go on the warrant. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, let's, let's, let's wait for the other one. Uh, the second one from the top, um, it's kind of controversial, but I, I kind of want to shock the town by saying, okay, here's a proposal to uh, disestablish the, the housing committee because nobody's interested. I sent out a, an email blast to everybody, you know, to our largest email list and asked for people to spread it around and got no responses of anyone who wanted to be on the housing committee. Since town meeting voted to establish this committee, I think it's up to town meeting to say, okay, we're, we're not going to establish But don't we have a bylaw that says we need to, you know, disestablish a committee if it doesn't meet for a year or some, there's some language yes. like that. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's true. But again, because this was a town meeting vote, I think it, it makes it a little more courteous to bring it back to town meeting sure. rather than just letting it die. Because that, that makes the record of town meeting votes clearer. Yeah. And people yeah. say, well, you know, why isn't there any housing committee? Well, it'll be clear if somebody looks at the record. Um, and that leaves us with, so um, that's just an introduction to them. And maybe you want to postpone the votes till next week. Um, but uh, I know Robert is here to talk about the strong fire chief and Ron to talk about the highway bylaw. Okay. Chief, why don't you go first? Well, we, you remember that we had the special town meeting last, uh, was it November? Yeah. October, November? Uh, I asked to have a uh, strong chief clarification added to the fire department, uh, the fire chief status. Uh, I think uh, we discussed it before, but I'll reiterate again that we're thinking or looking into the possibilities of aiding or eventually down the road in a few years, possibly merging the two town fire departments together into one department between the town of Asheville and the town of Conway because they are, they're very low numbers up there. Uh, and their chief is a strong chief act uh, status in Asheville. Always has been. Uh, so the, the, they felt that we should, that, that they should both be the same. If you're going to eventually down the road when you merge the two departments, I have one chief from both towns to save money and, and, and other things. That, they, that that same one person position should have both the same status or the other. In Conway, what? So, so when when you say they, is this is this something from the from the fire department, or is this something the select board up there has has talked about? This is the fire chief mentioned this to me. I guess it came. It sounded like it came from the the select board. Um, I always thought I was strong chief in this town. When I was first hired, I was told I was strong chief. Mm -hmm. But as later on in years we got investigated, the town never proved it, I guess. Uh, not never proved it, never were asked to vote on it. Uh, mm -hmm. back, back in 1980, maybe they didn't realize that they had to have a vote on it. I don't know. I mean, but in the special town meeting, there was an issue of having to change a town bylaw? Right. There were some questions about what was going to have to change for the town bylaw and stuff. We didn't have the answers that time, so they decided to table that. I right. believe that was a vote, right? Yeah. And then it could be bought up again at town meeting in in May. And and there was there was also the question that that uh, regardless of what you know your policy was mm -hmm. that that this would um, put into uh, the fire chief's mm -hmm. position the ability to to make policies for the fire department that could conceivably be different from mm -hmm. personnel policies of the town. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I recall that uh, the personnel committee had a concern about that. And uh, well, let me let me explain a little thing to you about to go along with that. I have just put this standard operating guidelines book together. As a matter of fact, the firemen don't even have it yet. We're going to get it a week from Wednesday night, all of them. And as part of the book, this is, it tells about the whole policy and procedures of the uh, uh, of the fire department. But the second half of this book is strictly the uh, town of Conway, because they all are town employees. The town of Conway's personal policies and procedures handbook is in the back. 
Yes, and I understand and it, that that is that is the way that, that you are presenting the policy. That would be my intention to make it the same as town. Why would you want something that's different from mm -hmm. well, one department uh, to, the, to the other, the rest of town? A future fire chief might decide that he wanted to do compensation or benefits or vacation or something like that, sick time or. Well, he you know, have to. Or I would different. think he would have to come back and ask the selectmen for a vote. Not not if he was a strong chief, and that, and I think that's the, at the root of the of what the personnel committee was saying, uh, we're not so sure that um, we want to recommend that for Conway. Well, I don't think you're ever going to see that in Conway because of the size of the town is. I mean, do you ever foresee a town in Conway having a full-time fire department? I don't. No, but it, if there's a strong chief... I mean, it, I can think of a lot of other towns that got a lot it, bigger than Conway are all volunteer. Uh, yeah, but that, that's, that's not the question. The question is that any fire chief would be able to change any of those policies. Right, but I mean, it would be it would be murder for the fire chief's own position if he did it without getting the consensus of the board of selectmen before it was done. Would this be something that the town would grant to you and wouldn't necessarily extend to the next chief? Or would this be something that would be the fire chief of Conway is a strong chief? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I don't know how the law is. I think that is the fire chief of Conway. We got a choice. I think that's the way it's probably worded. All right, I think, I think we know, we know the, the pros and cons. Um, but we don't know the answer today of what the town bylaw that has to get changed. Yeah, I, I, so. I think it's, it's um, you know, I've looked at it. And it's, there would have to be a number of changes to the personnel bylaw. But wouldn't um, that have to be in town meeting? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I know when I met with the board back in, before the special town meeting last year, I got the consensus and the board voted unanimously to back me on this. Yeah, yeah. And I would hope that you would still be in that, in that uh, frame of mind. Yeah, and, and I have separated the process uh, into two Part, so that the, the board's going to vote to either put it on the warrant or not, and then they're going to vote whether or not they recommend it. Because there are some things that the board might want to give the town the choice of that the select board didn't think was, was right, but they still wanted to put it on the warrant for the town to decide. Mm -hmm. So I, we haven't made that distinction in the past, and, uh, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do it now. That way, you know, it's... it's uh, it gives town meeting a little bit more of a role. Okay. All right. All set. Yeah. Okay. I do have one more item to mention. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. And you may want to brace yourself. For this. We just got our radio cost estimates in mail this week for the new 800 megahertz radio system that's coming into existence in the county, state, countywide. And I haven't got the digest at all yet. I was talking with Cameron Matt tonight, and him and I are hoping to meet sometime this next week. And I did meet with Asheville Highway Department, excuse me, Asheville Fire Chief, and the Asheville Police Chief, and Ken was not available that day, and the radio person that does all our radio work. The as it's turned out, the radio system is willing to purchase your radios, but that's it, a bare radio. So I'll just give you a hint here. They gave you three choices, there's the three models to pick from. Yep. Two different brands, three different models. Not each got three different models, but three models in comparison. And uh, like uh, this is for the portable radios now, I'm talking right now. For a Motorola has one that is, is no agency cost at all to us. Right. They just purchase it and give it to you. Yep. Okay. Then Kenwood has one for three hundred fifty-five dollars more money that we would have to know. Yep. And Motorola has another model that's five hundred forty-two dollars more per unit. That's the only part of it. How many do we buy? Then you turn the page over here. Now, not I said it was a bare radio. Mm -hmm. Then you've got all these other costs over here that we've got to figure out what's going to be included in this. And every one of them is an additional cost of time. Okay. Now that's on portable radios. Then when I go to the truck radios, like cruiser radio, 
the truck radios, the radio that's in the fire station, and possibly the radio that uh, emergency management may be getting. They run, they give you four different models of those radios. Only one or two of the models are no cost to get. The other two is are $481 or $459 a piece of additional money. But then you turn the page on that one, and then you got all your other added costs. Antennas. See, they're only giving you bare radios. They're not giving you any money to have them installed. They're not giving you any money to buy the paraphernalia that it takes to make these things work. I think I think FERCOG is trying to get them installed for nothing. Well, towns. this just came from the state this past week to all of us. Can you okay. drop a copy of that in my box, please? Uh, yeah. I can. So you want me to send you a copy of the email? Oh, sure. Yeah. If that's an attachment, sure. If this is an attachment, I'll email. Yeah, I think that I think the FERCOG is negotiating some of these. Well, books. we have not heard that yet. Okay. But um, what I was told. You better put it in this year's budget because very shortly the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Interoperable Radio System Operational <coughs> Radio Replacement Program is going to be contacting the town to say how many of each radio do you want because we're ordering them now. Yeah. And they're, as soon as they get them in, you got to pay for them. Mm -hmm. If you buy any of the ones that cost more. Yeah. But. All the operational stuff that's in those radios has got to come yeah. in them. Yeah. So all these add-on stuff is going to be paid for by your communities up front before the system's even installed. Okay. And they think it's going to be this 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 coming year, this 2020 year, that the state's going to ask for the the orders, and you got to come up with your share of the money. Do you have an estimate of what you think? I hate it. We did a just a yeah off the wall estimate last week at the meeting. Yeah. And it could be in the fire services and only. Could be between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. Twenty and thirty thousand dollars? Additional cost. Because all the radio charges had gone up in everyone's budget this coming year already. That was just for installation. Mm -hmm. Just uh, yeah, this that's, that's crazy. Just for I mean that's only a guesstimate, John, okay? Yeah. Kenny and I can give you a better idea when we sit down and figure out what his needs are and what my needs are. Uh, and and so on and so forth. Um, and this would be for the next fiscal year, for fiscal year 21. We'd have to buy them between, you know, July and right. the following July. Right. right. Okay. So, right. and up at this meeting that they talked about, Ashford talked about a lot, they're going to put something together for capital equipment uh, expense. Capital expense, because it's a one-time, out of the ordinary shop. So I think maybe that might be something you may want to look at too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, if it's all right, I'll, I'll try to get back to you guys next week on this. Yep. And maybe Kenny and I both will come in, hopefully. Okay. Because we're going to try to meet and we're going to make some heads or tails of these and, and try to figure out what we have to have and what we don't have to have. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to stay on that figure, John, but. It was, it was it was talked about figure only. You know, it's every time yeah. was different too. The FERCOG is gonna to try to pay for a lot of this. We're trying to get get this included in the cost of the town. So all right, but thanks. Yeah, and if you can get us some more numbers next week, that'd be right. great. But how does would the court will the FERCOG be giving you an answer prior to us posting our town meeting more? Uh we're we're working on it at FERCOG. The finance committee's working on it. Because you know that's coming up pretty fast, and so we're going to have a sworn yes, set in stone here very shortly. Yeah. So, yeah. well, give us the numbers you have next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. That's mm -hmm. it. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Okay. Ron. Depositing snow in the roads. I've got a here for everybody. Are we having trouble with that this year in this in this overly warm winter? Actually, yes, we are. Okay. That's my post, right? Basically, in 2014, we asked at town meeting to put a bylaw in place, and that really made things. 
lot more difficult back to the field. Something's got to happen here where we have some, some way of people not just plowing into the road or snowballing their snow into the road. We've got to have some kind of recourse to mm -hmm. try to eliminate that from happening. I mean, this year, luckily, we had the warm weather in between the snowstorms, so a lot of the stuff went away in between the storms, but if we start, I mean, it, it is really getting back out there. Yes. Is it bad for, is it mostly contractors that are plowing it out into it? I or? can't tell. Whether, I don't think so. I don't think it's just contracting. Is no, because there's, we are, there's also people that shovel their snow into the roadway. Hmm. So I'm, um, I don't know what else to do. Um, I tried talking, finding out if there was some other legal thing that, because they're making a hazard for people driving on the roads and stuff from what's happening, and I. Having gotten any books, haven't. All right. Well, certainly we we've, we've got to put the bylaw on mm -hmm. to to give it some teeth. Yeah. Will this be the first time we have a bylaw? Or, I mean, I thought we passed one. No, it failed. Oh, it failed. I see. Yeah. So this, uh, I gave out a, a rewrite. Uh, Ron looked at what we had and had some further ideas, and I liked some of his language and. Uh, and I like some of my language, so um, this is uh, a combination of those, mostly in the first clause there. This is just separated to give people, to give uh, you a, uh, a chance to look at the, the different elements to the bylaw. The, the first is the actual, you know, what's wrong, mm -hmm. and then the second is what happens. This would, this would put it into our non-criminal disposition bylaw so we could give people tickets for doing it, right. or we could at least threaten to give them tickets and then give them tickets. Right. Uh, it includes the idea that uh, just because um, you might not be the one who's at home, uh, that you need to tell your contractors not to do this. Yeah. And you know we can follow that up with messaging and tax bills and things like that. And then, um, just so that people don't think Ron's going to be out there giving people tickets, we can give our uh, police officers more employment by uh, having them call them. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Questions, Bob? No. Uh, we can hope it'll pass. So, well, the only thing I wonder is whether we want to have some more specific things about snow blowing and plowing and oh, and I think if we did that with. Uh, I, I could say, by, I know, but by any means. I could say by any means after the second put. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, I know in my car, if I don't clean the snow off my roof and I start down the hill and I put my brakes on the road of the hill, some of the snow falls forward and it goes out the road. And well, that's already well, illegal. illegal. You're going to get so, a ticket. Well, I mean, yeah, that's so already. Illegal. I don't want to get a ticket, but, but that's already illegal. illegal. Yeah, but in the whole state, that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. See, unfortunately. Each town has to have a bylaw for the snow um, disposition. You know, what you're doing with your snow. I mean, it, the town needs a bylaw so that people can't put it in the town way. Yeah. The state already has it. It's illegal for anybody to put snow in, in the, the state, state highway. But not, each town has to do their own. Yeah, yeah. I'm not quite sure why, but. It's not. For the ones that did it years ago, it's easy now <laughs> for them. But for us, yeah. we got to convince everybody that all the ones that put it in the roadway that they can't do it anymore. All right. Yeah, a bylaw like this certainly makes sense. By the, yeah. Surveillance given. <laughs> They give everybody put in a ring, a ring doorbell that the town can look out of. Is it all over the town run? This goes on? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ron. Okay, good. Right. Thank you. So you don't need an action, but, you, but I mean, we're going to approve this next week. Yeah. Yes. I, I had originally thought we might be able to get it done. Yeah. Good. <coughs>
Finance Committee, come on up. finances as a whole. I spend a lot of time in the beginning after a little bit of, you know, there's a quick summary on the first couple of pages about, you know, here's how I get to the idea that I'm presenting a balanced budget or a budget that's in the black. Um, and I, I'll, I'll say this is, this is always really dicey because we don't know what our revenues are going to be. We never know what they are. So we try to estimate them conservatively and just pray that uh, our revenues actually are what we're expecting them to be. So that's the real, uh, the real unknown in this is what the revenues actually are. There's a, there's a discussion of the expected revenues and all the figures, and I did go over all of them with Lee Whitcomb, our administrative assessor, who has a, an excellent handle on what the revenues are. She's the one who has to be uh, accountable to the Department of Revenue for those estimates. So I always use her uh, uh, wisdom in setting those. And some of the information is repeated in various places, but I think the flow pretty much makes sense. There's a pretty good discussion after the uh, summary of free cash, where it all came from. Everybody wants to know where the free cash came from. This is where the free cash came from. This is how much it was. And uh, some ideas about it. Uh, there's, a, there's a chart on page four of what it's looked like over time. I think next year's is going to be smaller than this year's uh, substantially. Uh, big discussion on page five of the retiree health benefits because that's one of the uh, that's one of the things that's going up so much in this year's budget uh, and and also OPEB uh, comes under that too. Actually, I may have uh, mislabeled that section. That really should be should be OPEB. Um, going into projected revenues and expenses and uh, an overview of the four major categories starting on page six, general government and what it includes, public safety, public works, and then for budgetary purposes, the state lumps education, health, and human services together. So those are the four categories that I use in, in presenting this budget because that's the way the state does it, and it can help you line up things in your mind if you're looking at the DOR website. Uh, I spent some time talking about capital items and our new uh, committee, some potential capital projects. I'm mentioning the, uh, a possible town hall improvement project because we, we did set up a town hall and town office renovation committee. Uh, I've been so busy doing the budget, I haven't had time to convene that yet, but I hope to soon. And then the, uh, the Wastewater Committee and its downtown community septic system, which we discussed earlier this night as a, as a possible economic development project, if we could get an earmark for it. On page 9, I, I make some notes about 
some of the things we spent some money on before, in case people want updates. Uh, a little bit of a plug for borrowing on page 10, and some notes on taxes. Page 11 shows two charts which are not quite the same. Uh, the first is Conway's average single tam family tax bill, but that average is the mean, or the arithmetical average. What the state has is it has median single family tax bills, or where the more people, as many people pay below that as pay above that. So it's a slightly different measure of central tendency, uh, but they're more or less comparable. And of course it shows that everybody goes up. Um, I don't think we've been going up as rapidly in the last few years as the state, so that's good. Uh, but, and, and we are, you know, behind the state high, but the, the state will include, you know, eastern Massachusetts properties, which are just more valuable. No question about that. Uh, I show an a average tax bill comparison on page 12 for all the Franklin County towns. First, uh, in case you want to look at a particular town alphabetically, and then uh, in the other column, I have it by uh, tax bill itself, where you can see Conway is the third highest behind Shootsbury and at the top, Leverett, which is more than $1,000 more than Conway. Do you have any idea why the median is so much flatter than the mean? No, the other way around. Why the mean is so much flatter than the median? Uh, I, I'm not sure how to think about that in normal English terms. But. I think our tax bills have been going up less rapidly <coughs> than the states, which is another way of saying that our, tax, that our land values have not been going up as much as the state. Uh, a little bit of an update on grants, page 12 and 13. Uh, and then I talk about uh, some significant budgetary items and trends. Um, obviously, the, and this is where I talk about the major items in the budget. The health care benefits, showing what they've been like in past years. You know, it's pretty volatile. Sometimes they don't go up much, sometimes they go up a lot once they went down. You know, so it's, it's um, very difficult to estimate that, uh, but we try. Uh, I discussed the, the, the uh, recycling budget here for people who haven't heard about it already. Um, the insurance is going to go up over $10,000 for sure. Um, as a matter of fact, in the, uh, in the Excel sheet, you have I think there's, there's my final figure for insurance under 193. And uh, Tom, I did include on the Excel sheet all the, the names of the accounts. I know, thank you. This time. Sure, it's yeah, thank you. Thanks, that was, a, that was a great suggestion. I think I cut it out because I wasn't printing any landscape. But I finally broke down and did it on the big sheet. So that's going up over 11,000, I think, isn't it? 11.7. Yeah, 11.7. Yeah, and, you know, the good news from that is that. Uh, it's going up due uh, pretty much to a single workers' comp claim. Uh, it really drove it up very high. Uh, and we have, um, and, and that will roll off, um, you know, as, as, we, as we go on. So it's not, it's not a permanent uh, rise, but it certainly is affecting us this year when we have a lot of rises and things we can't. Uh, control. Uh, I also talk about our payroll in general. Um, my budget is the fourth budget that's going up over ten thousand dollars, just over ten thousand. Uh, some of that is due to my taking on four thousand dollars in expense that had been in the Conservation Commission and Planning Board budgets, but it makes sense to pay that administrative assistant out of a single budget. So I'm absorbing that into mine. Uh, then I have a memo about the budget process. I just include the memo. That's on page 14. I include the memo that I send out. Uh, this is following. There's a government finance officials association that has a model budget that they have. And they have 
17 points you have to include in the budget and another dozen that it's a good idea for you to include. Uh, I don't quite hit the 17 in this because as a small town, some of them don't make as much sense as they might, but I do try to include as many. And one of them is the budget process memo uh, or the budget memo that gets sent out. They say you should include a copy of that so everybody sees what the process is as laid out for the town staff who are participating in it. And finally, I get to revenue. So we've been on expenses so far. And this is, this is the part that's, that's the real, uh, uh, it's a real gamble. All of the figures uh, for FY 2021 are projected, except the, um, the available receipts on table four, that reflects what we're planning to draw from for town meeting. So the, the first part's the property tax levy, and this is straight from the, uh, the tax recap sheet uh, that we send into the state every year. And obviously we can't close out FY20 yet, so that's why FY20 figures are also projected. Uh, so state aid, table two, that comes from the cherry sheet. Uh, ta table one comes from the state. Table two comes the cherry sheet, I guess also from the state. Table three is local receipts. Uh, and you can see we've been uh, hovering around 240 for a motor vehicle excise tax. We projected 225 last year in order to be conservative. We're projecting 225 again next year being conservative. It, it can be a temptation to uh, estimate your, your receipts a little more closely to what you think they're actually going to be so that you can accommodate expenses in your budget. Uh, but, but car sales are way down, though. But that's, so. a, that's a dangerous game to play, and we would much rather yeah. underestimate any of these receipts. So that next section, Table 3, that's all uh, cherry sheet. I'm, I'm sorry, that's all local receipts that we deal with uh, on the town side. And then Table 4, available receipts again, uh, and that's page 18. That's... Uh, all of the things that are scheduled to be spent at town meeting. Or not all of them, but uh, the ones, uh, I won't even go into that, but it's available receipts. Um, there, there are two ways of calculating it with, uh, with offsets and without offsets. Uh, that has to do with the way the cherry sheet is calculated. And I just give both those figures in case anybody's following that. Um, uh, something that I did not include in Table 4 available receipts was any of the community preservation money that is, um, you know, it, it, whatever we spend is, is directly offset. Um, these other these other funds that we've used, we're not using up what we're appropriating. Um, we do have, you, you can see on the Excel sheet, a little more nuance with the revenues. In the, ta in the tables on the right, the middle one has the CPA expected um, revenue and expenses. So the expenses are the expenses. The revenue is just coming from the CPA funds themselves. So it's really a wash in terms of, of um, the town having to raise money. It's not a raise in appropriate. And, and really none of the ones this year in that, in that table four are either. Anyway, that's how the receipts are laid out by the state. So that's how I'm recording them here. Um, expenses. I have two ways of doing this on page 19 and page 20. The first is by the department, so you can see what the departments are asking for. And then on page 20, it's by source of funds, so you can see how much we're spending from the various funds that we have available. I am pleased to say that both of those numbers at the end, both of the totals, are in fact the same. Uh, that can take more work than you might imagine. <laughs> 
as you line up all of the different items and where they're coming from. And then the beginning of the discussion of the operating expenses, which is what most people think of when they think of the budget on page 21. I show the, the years up to the current year as to what the percentage rise in the operating budget was and what that meant in real terms in, in that year and have a discussion of uh, what the, the major items over 10,000 on, uh, on the town side of the budget are. And I'm sorry, I included insurance in an earlier section, but I didn't copy it into this section. So the, the, there is an insurance discussion, but it's, uh, it's earlier. And I apologize for not having included it in this section. I'll, I will uh, probably come out with a corrected version of this just for the record. So if anybody ha sees any more corrections, please, uh, please let me know. Oh, this one has, I'm actually not entirely sure this is the, uh, this is the final version. I, on the top of page 22, I corrected uh, the capital A in China on the top line. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, I thought there was an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if it's not the uh, last version, it's the next to last version, which is almost all good. Um, so, 2021 budgets by category and department. There's a summary on page 23, little pie chart. Um, and the summary discussion continues on page 24, and then it gets into the actual budgets with sub-accounts, which is one of the valuable things in this document. So I'm giving out to everybody what you all saw as part of the discussion about the budgets. And I try to put in the text as much as I can uh, in explanation as to why costs have risen. So that occupies the rest of the budget. Um, except for the final two pages, uh, one thing is an organizational chart and then a projected Article 2, which does not include any wage rise that the Finance Committee might recommend and the Select Board might approve. I have included at the bottom of the Excel sheet the figures for a 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0 uh, wage rise, uh, what that means in actual dollars and what that would do to the increase, the percentage increase in the budget over last year. So that is the overview of the budget document. And uh, I, will, I will go back and see uh, whether or not I should have printed out a different file. And then uh, uh, make sure that that's available for everyone. I will have some paper copies of this at the, uh, at the town office. Uh, it will also be online. Yeah, when I put it online, I will put it on as a PDF. Okay. A lot of work, Tom. I would say. At town meeting? Yes. What? I don't even, does this get mailed to the households? Or? No. No. No, no. No. Um, people eat. People just find, they find it online, uh, or they can come into the town office and get it. Um, yeah, we don't spend a whole mailing on this, partly because it's preliminary. Right. Um, it, it does not include the, uh, right. you know, what, what, what's final is, the, is what's on the town meeting warrant. And, you know, over the next month, the um, Finance Committee and the Select Board will be making recommendations on them. and. Uh, you know, deciding what finally goes on the warrant. Um, and so I, I don't want to over-promise in one sense, but this is meant to give people an idea of 
why things are happening. Right. Can, I, can I ask you just, uh, I didn't quite follow everything you were saying about CPA funds. And they're listed here. She, so do we know what items we're asking for? Yeah. To be useful. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. And that's the three. library is asking for 88,000. Right. Um, the school is asking for 200,000. Okay. Actually, uh, new, yeah, new, new data here. New, 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 data, data. new data point. The uh, yeah. CPA committee just uh, agreed, uh, recommended to move forward to town meeting 250,000 for the playground. 250. And that'll be enough that we won't have to take anything out of the fund? No, I'm afraid it no. Be. <laughs> um, but I, I, I was going to say, I was going to wait to talk about that rather than inter this is sort of yeah. sentence uh, interrupting right here. So if you want, okay. want to finish your thought and then we can get back to that. Yeah, let, let's, um, you want to talk about that now? Sure. Okay. So there is, uh, I, can only get, I can only get two copies total. Um, so that the this is the breakdown of the costs, um, and they 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 uh, Carlos from Berkshire Design Group came up and did this put together. The, so that the, the they're going to keep the current play structure, um, but the, everything else is going to get redone and changed and the. The old, the old swing sets that have been, uh, that I personally have seen two kids break their arms on, uh, will be replaced. Um, um, and they, you know, when you look, so, so the, the total for the, for the work they have is 237,000, but with an 18% O and P. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make some, some copies for the finance. Do you know what O and P stands for? Uh, o and P. O and P. So it's an overage fund for change orders? Or it's, it's, an additional, it's an additional charge. Ledge, so ledge that's found under a footing? Something like that. It's like yeah, it's contingency, it's not design contingency. fee, and that's, O and P. That's, that's for planning. That's for um, oversight and planning. Oversight and planning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sort of like clerk of the works thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so they have the the total for is two hundred and thirty-seven for the work, eighteen percent for the planning, fifteen percent contingency, eight eight percent design, for three hundred and thirty-five thousand. Phil, I have a question. These numbers were really conservative. Is that playground that's going to be in the existing space? Yeah. Is that right on top of the part of the leach field? Um, yes. So yeah, right. if there was a problem with the leach field, the stuff has to be disassembled, the leach field worked on, and then put back. No, I think the the the, the part that that is the leach field part of it is never they've never built on top of it. It's just right. the, the part of the play area overall play okay, area. So but this it's, would never be serviceable. Need to be serviced. Right. This no. Do we need to but yeah, they, And, and that's their project funding. Yes. There's another 80,000 that's the estimated 3% uh, to raise on the tax rate. So, so wait a minute. So, 
This plus the 80 some odd thousand for the library. What is how much? 400 and? No, no, that includes the 80,000 for the library. This does? No. No, no, no. No, this, this is just the Conway Grammar School. Right. Right, and it says three hundred and thirty-five dollars. Right, yeah. boys saying plus eight so gets you up to four twenty. Or something. Oh, I see. And I see. So when that comes out of CPA, and then there's the open space. What's no, the proposal? The, the CPA, CPA request is, well. is two hundred and fifty thousand for, for the grammar school. Oh, and eighty some odd for there, so it's three and a quarter. It's going to be. Um, it, what makes up the difference? So no, so I, all I'm asking is what's <laughs> left in CPA after they expend this. So we know. According to Malcolm, there's still a lot left. Okay. Much. Yes. Okay. Um, sure. and, and sure. Malcolm sure. was very critical that as soon as it became public, according to Malcolm, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as it became public knowledge just how much is out there, every project is shaken loose from the trees and the line is forming out the door. And, uh, and why him? Because he only wanted to be chairman for just for one year. Now everybody <laughs> under the desk. <laughs> and, and, so, and you all better stand up for his cupola and make it happen and that about it. That's passed though, right? No, that wasn't passed. That was took up five minutes of our time listening to it. Oh. Okay. And uh, uh, so just uh, again, in terms of the Excel sheet, what anything that's on as an expense other than that 80000 um, which is the 3% rise, that's the 3% tax, yeah. uh, whatever that other figure is, is both in revenues and expenses, so it's a wash in terms of that chart. Right. My, my only point was, I want to know what was left, so the answer is there's plenty left. So yeah, it, it had a million dollars in it. So, money in the answer? So, it had a million. Right. So, this fund is now sort of functioning as a supplemental you know, to, I, I myself don't mind, but it's an interesting, <laughs> they used to, it, it used to be more highly restricted. Yes, it was. Yes. yes. yes it, so, so it's legal to be involved with the school, the CPS? Yes, yes it is. Commonwealth yes. and its wisdom. It's actually, it's it's school. Change. playgrounds, playgrounds, uh, civic playgrounds are actually one of the specific favored things in the statute. They're actually listed. It, it comes under the recreation, open space and recreation purpose. There's open space and recreation, historic preservation, and housing, housing, affordable housing. Right. This is the third purpose. Initially, open space, historical, and affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Elderly housing, typically. And I think, I think Ma 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 you know, Ma Malcolm just said that this is that the school thing is probably the most appropriate project that's ever come before the CPA committee because it's the first time. You actually picked a project that was actually mentioned in the law. The old, the How could they limit it to the 250 cool. instead of was the full 335? Um, uh, because. Well, they, are they are they the, proposing the, to use any of their own capital yeah. funds? No. No, the, the 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 capital funds are for the you know in the event of the boiler and the heating system and the roof and all going at once, which is really more of a of a um, reserve fund for emergencies. Right. Yeah, I think they also need a, a real capital fund that includes all the capital needs of the school. So the school is looking for the remaining eighty thousand to come from the funds. Correct. Although um, that. That the the, the the from my conversation with the building facilities manager, I, I think it's reasonable to expect that the number for the project would be lower than what's put here. That this is a conservative number, um, I put together by the first year design group engineer based, taking our taking our own in house numbers and being more conservative with them. Um, but I. I so yeah, there was there was going to be some type of request to the funds, but um, hopefully not not enough so that you'd be worried about being able to give scholarships out of them or anything like that. So. Well, the scholarships only can be in the interest that the funds earn, right. and so the the funds are really depleted from what they used to be. So the scholarships are really dropped from right. what they used to be. So two fifty is coming from CPA. So where's the other the other money coming? Well, the goal is to knock that number down and then to request it from 
the trust, I guess, from the trusts is what they're going to do. They're going to knock this number down, and the difference between the 250 and whatever that number is, they want to come out of the trust? Right. The CPA trust. No. No, no. The, the, the Germain fund. The Germain oh. and the Boy, Boise. Hmm. Now, doesn't the school get it? Oh, that's for all the other stuff. Did anybody know, is this, we don't want this playground, right? It's open. No, the playground is open 24-7, 365. And if somebody gets hurt in there, what it's, happens? If there was this one down here. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it's just a general walk. That's general open 24 right. And, and that's, 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 part that's, that's part of it because there have been so many, in, I mean, there's been right. so many injuries in no, our playground. And according to the school is, nurse, like it's, our playground is about the same amount of injuries as the other three elementary it's schools combined. Shape, that yeah. I observed it not compared to other playgrounds. Yeah. Well, it's it's fun. Fun. There's, there's no place soft to fall in our no, playground. You just you fall, you break bones. Right. So we don't have to worry about. Uh, so this playground and new mm -hmm. still won't be risk free, right? No, playgrounds are. Pretty I hope not. Playgrounds are pretty dangerous. Play 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 risk free. Risk free. No. Yeah, yeah. risk-free uh, is a bead bag in the middle of a grass lawn. I mean, it's you know, it's just that's right. But that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's about it. But that's what we came to be going for, you know. But uh, yeah. helmets, pads on the floor, no one get hurt. Risk-free. Yeah, it's yeah, no. Um, but the, the, yeah, so the, the idea is to not have as many people get injured. If you have a safer playground, you're less likely to have liability problems. So, got to make it safer to fall. The swing set in particular. So what they, the reason that this all came up is because they made the initial call to do something about the grip, the surface of the bottom of the swing set. And they came out and they said your swing set is massively illegal and has to be replaced immediately. It's a dick Is that asphalt today? It, um, it, it may have been wood chips at one time. Now it's just bare ground that's all dug out. But the swings, the, the support poles for this, for the swing, it's a big, the support bowls are so close to each swing that a kid can very easily just in, unintentionally launch themselves into the pole right in front, and that happens repeatedly because um, there needs to be like more swing area and less pole area, um, and so that's that's the one piece of equipment that desperately needs to get replaced. Um, but. A lot, a lot of it is the sur is surface, mm. the surface stuff. The as all the asphalt is uh, is a real tripping hazard. Kids are constantly falling over the big cracks and the holes in the asphalt because it's old, way beyond its ten year recommended lifespan. Mm. Um, so, a lot of the stuff was they they put up right when right when they they opened the grammar school. Most of the playground is original to that. Mm. So, it's done. It's twenty it's twenty something years. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Phil. All right, uh, what else do we have here, Thomas? We've got, uh, you guys have other questions on no, 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 the no. presentation? Yeah, I think uh, you guys don't need to even come next time because we won't be hearing from the schools till the 23rd. And so that's that's the next thing, and you know you can start making recommendations on any of the items that are on that Excel sheet uh, whenever you like. And we will be uh, by the end of the month. It would be great to have your recommendations on this. So come at the bottom. The joint meeting with finance. Ignore that. Yeah, ignore that. Okay. That, was, that was a cut and paste. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank
And committee news, the Open Space Committee has received word from the first pod. Which is, oh yeah, if you can uh, just put put those up uh, uh, under those coat racks for now, that would be great. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take clear care of cleaning up most of the stuff. Oh, Because, okay. yeah, now that we have this nice floor, we're going to try to keep it nice till Friday anyway. Be sure to vote tomorrow. Yes. So in committee news, the Open Space Committee has received word from the FERCOG that the Open Space and Recreation Plan project has been granted $6,000 from the Direct Local Technical Assistance Program, leaving an estimated 14,000 to request from the Community Preservation Committee. The Planning Board has requested, as a result of conversation with Roaring Glen Farm and its neighbors, that the Select Board send a letter to the operation clarifying that Whateley Glen Road is a county road and a public way. I will note here that it is not maintained by the town past the driveway of Roaring Glen Farm, but it is still used, including coal slumber having an entrance to its property off that road. So how does that impact it? Is there... it it's just a clarification. They're asking, so I'll have a letter for clarification yeah, next, next week. Fine. So what, what, uh, how certain are you that it's a county road as opposed to a town road? 100%. Uh, the administrative assessor has successfully notified the U.S. Census that the boundaries of the town have not changed since 2010. We haven't added any more space. Sadly, we, <laughs> Phil's plan to take over Ashfields has, has, uh, has not borne fruit yet. Okay. They still retain the height advantage. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. I've been working on the CPC Community Preservation Committee request for quotes for the town hall repair project being the cupola repair and the front door pillars replacement. Town Council has reviewed and approved the draft construction contract. We only had a goods and services contract template. The RFQ is being published Wednesday with quotes opened March 18th. But we approved money for this, didn't we? At the yeah, we did. meeting. Yeah. 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 Well, if, if the amount was under $50,000, why are you doing this? Why, we, don't, why, don't, why aren't we just picking up the phone and just so signing a contract and getting it done. Well, the contract was the uh, was the main part of that. But we also have to have specifications for what the contract is actually going to do, and we also have to get uh, the prevailing wage sheets and attach that to the request for quotes, and explain how the request for quotes is going to be managed. And so uh, the last piece of that puzzle was getting the contract uh, the contract template approved so that people know what they're going to be signing. And uh, now that all those pieces are in place, the request for quotes is going out. And, and it doesn't, it, it's not a, a sealed bid, which is what you get over uh, $50,000. And that also includes a performance bond and, and other requirements. So, so this is the, the pared down version. I, I, think it, I think since it's getting close to $50,000, it's good to treat it somewhat formally. And we are required to do a lot of the things as well. Uh, the newspaper committee is working on getting out a short newsletter announcing its formation. Uh, they, they have met, they're continuing to meet, and they're going to get, some, you know, a, a brief one like the last visitor, something just to let people know that it's in the works. Is, uh, they're, they're planning to get that out. So there, I did hear an idea about um, a non a non money article at town meeting to give the voters a choice of one or two names for the newsletter and just have a vote of arm raising vote and seems like an appropriate thing to do. I don't know. Easy um, way. Could just be a couple of minutes and you have a new name. I, I think we will already have published a couple by then. So uh, I think the initial decision will at least be made by the newsletter committee and I'm sure that they can publicize a contest for a name if, if people want to don't want to treat the uh, temporary newsletter as its permanent name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to commend town staff, especially Bruce Joannet and Ron Sweet and the highway crew for getting the floor in this room refinished and also extend my thanks to everyone else who cooperated. Mm -hmm. 
the highway department has noticed some work being done on town property and items stored on town property that are in the way of plowing and suggests that either I or the select board might send a letter clarifying the process for notif notifying the town if work needs to be done on its property. Um, what are we talking about? I'm, specifics, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to do that, or I can bring it to the select board as a more formal item next time. It's, it's sh should be a quick letter that we can send out to anybody who's doing this. I, it should be like a form letter, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll, I can fill you in on that as, as I do it. Um, I checked the workers' compensation records and it was a single claim that accounted for most of the rise in FY 2021's assessment. I mentioned this uh, in the discussion. We should be in substantially better shape next year, though, the way that line item is calculated. Both the Conway Grammar School and the Frontier Regional School will be able to present their budgets on March 23rd instead of March 16th. Superintendent Modesto will not be able to make it, but Shelley Pareda, the business manager, will be able to attend and present the Frontier budget. So that's what it's shaping up for the uh, school budget meeting. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tom. Concerns of the select, do we have any concerns, gentlemen? No concerns, okay, now. Uh, let's see. Is that field letter? Is that in the mail? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it's the, um, they're inviting us to participate in their 350th anniversary of the find, the founding of the town of uh, Hatfield. <coughs> How do we want to participate, Jim? They asking if to march in the parade. I, mean, I, don't know. I didn't see a parade even listed. No, I didn't. Yeah. They wanted they to didn't. stand in the background while they give speeches. They didn't say what they wanted to do. Well, there's a parade subcommittee. Would like to cordially extend our invitation to participate in our anniversary parade. Um, right. want, do you want to do a float, Phil? Yeah. Do you, want, do you want to put a float together? They, they, they liked our suits, our, 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 our Sunderland T-shirts. They think. were they were formerly a direct bordering neighbor of ours. Mm. Right. But because they they Waitley, they carved Waitley out of Hatfield yes. before there was a yeah. Waitley. Conway mm -hmm. was before Waitley, and we were our first decade direct neighbors of Hatfield. And I will note that they also specifically request that it be forwarded to historic societies as well as commissions. Yeah. So I, I trust that uh, our select board member who is so closely connected with the historical society <laughs> might um, sure. make that happen. And I will make sure the historical commission gets it as well. I did send, uh, I did forward it all. Is, there, is there an extra copy of that letter? You, you should you have should one have one has it. Oh, uh, maybe. Or in, in your, uh, I, I think it's in your, in your, in your folder, your green folder, which is, which is your, your personal mail. Yeah. Oh, you don't have that. Sorry. Uh, it's in the box then. Okay. We also got a letter from uh, Lisa White, our uh, public uh, health nurse. Um, talking about the uh, coronavirus and uh, main points are that uh, there's currently little risk in Massachusetts and everything that one can do to prevent the coronavirus will also help prevent uh, the very severe flu season we are currently having. So essentially there's not, not much to worry about at this point in time. However, today I saw people walking the streets of Northampton and Amherst with surgical masks on. I was shocked. And they probably didn't get their flu shot. I, I do not know. People see well, there's the a larger international population yeah. in those areas due to students. Still. And Never seen that before. Never seen that. I, I was listening to a financial program on the radio as I was driving today, and uh, they were saying that BJ's and Costco were absolutely mobbed yesterday yeah. because people are stocking up in case they have to be quarantined. Stocking up on Purell, on, Purell on, on, on off-the-shelf all, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of uh, uh, Any 
Okay, and the rest of this. Uh, Actually, the Hatfield Parade is only 1.8 miles. That's half the length of the S Sunderland Parade. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, a much more favorably inclined. Piece, piece of cake. Piece of cake. There you go. All right. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for um, next Monday, March 9th, here in the town hall. And we'll have a joint committee, or we will not have a joint committee. Yes, so the finance committee. So I'm thinking that it's entirely possible we can just meet at the town office instead. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, let's meet at the town office at 6 o'clock. Since we don't have to have that many other people with us. Okay. At Good Dan, town office. Town office it is. All right. There's no other meeting to come before the board. I'll uh, make a motion that we adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye.